Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 10th. As you can see, I've got about 50% of my gear packed up. I'll be heading out tomorrow morning, that's Monday morning, for the meetup in Canton, Ohio. That's the Midwest meetup. It takes place on the 17th. So next weekend, don't expect a TDD report. So we're going to skip a weekend there so that I can spend some time with my friends. And uh, the meetup doesn't even end there. It's going to move down to the clubhouse down in Newcomer's Town and keep on keeping on. So um, I'll be taking a break for that weekend just to let you guys know. This first one, this is a, a reference to something I have been following myself and I've been asked about from Gamer Glow and from Tim McGraw both. It's about the dark spot on the top part of the sun. It's not really dark per se, it's just dark in comparison to the rest of the sun. What's happening right now is we're going through a polar shift in the sun in the solar cycle. But one thing unusual about this, uh, two things unusual actually, the fact that the North Pole has already started switching and the rest of the South, the central and south part hasn't quite caught up yet. Not super unusual, but the other part that is very unusual is the fact that there is very little sunspot activity, and the scientists are kind of thinking that this may be something um, similar to what happened back in 1850 when we had a maunder minimum, and there was like a, a, they call it the Little Ice Age. If you want to look that up in Wikipedia about the Little Ice Age, we've had a few of those actually, according to reports. Uh, some scientists disagree, and they say it's a combination of sunspot activity but you also have ocean currents that have an effect you also have volcanic activity so this may not mean just because the sunspots going down but they think this is a prediction that in the future this is solar cycle number 24 and they think in solar cycle 25 it's going to be way less too based on past history or whatever and they're the experts about this but um, yeah we're thinking that maybe this cool weather trend that we're having uh, I'm not a climate specialist I'm not a meteorologist but I know in the Midwest we've had a lot cooler, wetter uh, summer than we've normally had. I mean, this is just like a continuous spring that just never comes to an end. So uh, this may be a trend for a while because of the activity in the sun, or it may not. It's uh, the, sci the climate scientists are the ones that are experts about that. This next one was sent to me by NT8 via, let me get this right, 103M95G. If you are a moto vlogger, you probably already know this, but if not, and you're into action cams, which a lot of us use, even non-moto vloggers use action cams a lot. Uh, one of the big players in the business, it seems like, has gone down. Contour has shuttered the, door, shuttered the doors, and as of last week when the employees showed up for work, the doors were locked, so this was kind of fast and unexpected. Uh, unconfirmed rumors say they still could reopen if they find the right kind of buyer, but um, I think in that kind of case, the time is rather limited if nobody steps forward in the next few weeks. Um, the only other possibility I see for Contour ever going back is maybe uh, one of the smaller players that wants to kind of step up, like Midland seems to be making action cams. Uh, maybe in the future they may just buy the name and it'll be kind of like Polaroid and a lot of other brand names that it'll go on a camera, but it will not be really related to Contour. Kind of sad to see it because uh, I always thought Contour cameras were a pretty decent player. I mean, they've, they've had their faults too, but so has Drift, so has GoPro. I mean, all of these action cameras, either in the firmware or the camera or the hardware or something they've all had glitches along the way that's what happens when you're cutting edge so kind of sad to see contour go and I wish they would stick around because I do like the competition and I'll admit I'm a fanboy of GoPro cameras because they fit what I like to do but I always want to see other players in the competition just to keep the other ones honest and this next one this was uh it's kind of interesting how if you get contracts in the mail for stuff this is kind of a little bit amusing you you all of us get these contracts in the mail for credit card and it's like page after page and I don't know about you guys but I've never read one all the way from top to bottom and all the fine print and everything like that and I think really to, to get you on the hook they kind of count on doing that well this guy let me get his name right here his name is Dmitry Agarkov he actually bothered to read through the contract crossed out parts changed parts, rewritten the contract, scanned it, sent it into the bank under his terms, and his terms were 0% interest, no late fees, and unlimited credit. Um, there's no, There was no limit to how much uh, the total balance on his credit card could be. He sent it into the bank, and they signed it and let it go through. Well, it took him a couple of years to catch on to this, and they canceled this credit card, and then they took him to court uh, for about 1300 and something dollars of fraud, and the uh, judge said, no, uh, no excuse. You can't pull that stuff like you do with people saying, oh, you didn't read the contract. You guys didn't read the contract? Too bad. You have to abide by it. So all the guy owes is a little bit over $500 for the balance of actual 
purchases he made, but no no fraud, no nothing like that. And he's even talking about possibly countersuing them too for uh, you know pulling the same kind of thing like they do on other people. You can't just say, well, you guys didn't read the contract, but you know, too bad. The, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So. Uh, Believe it or not, I actually did that one time. A lawyer presented me with a paper that had some financial stipulations in it, and I crossed parts of it out and rewrote my own parts, sent it back, and they accepted it, rewrote it, sent it back to me. So realize, anytime you do contract business or something like that, it's an offer and it's a two-way street. You're not subject to have to. Now realize they always have the ability, if they don't like how you've rewritten it, they could turn the contract down, but it's just the same on your side too. If you don't like how the contract's presented to you, you can always refuse to sign it or turn it down. So... Just remember, everything in life is negotiable. So anyway, that's about for about it for this week. I will catch you guys most likely in two weeks. I should be back and uh, have a report for you then. So take care, everybody. Catch you later.